Hello, AESD stakeholders. I am Superintendent Dr. Chris Downing, and I would like to welcome you to today's town hall. Today, we're going to discuss our reopening plan and the measures that our district is implementing to ensure safety and social distancing at all times. For today, we will begin with a look at the guidance and resources that advise all districts in providing a safe reopening. These resources include Governor Newsom, the California Department of Education, the California Department of Public Health, the Orange County Department of Education, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the OC Healthcare Agency, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the California State COVID-19 website, and the Environmental Protection Agency. Next, let's take a look at the four tiers used by the state of California to determine whether it is safe for a county to reopen. These tiers are purple, red, orange, and yellow. Currently, Orange County falls within the red band, meaning it is safe to reopen schools. And as of September 22nd, districts across Orange County reviewed their data and made the determination if the conditions were safe within their communities. Now, in looking at the requirements of each tier, let's take a look at the second tier or red tier in which Orange County falls within. As you can see, in order to be in this second tier, there must be between four to seven new cases of COVID-19 per day per 100,000 citizens. If there are more than seven, again, a county would be determined to be within the purple tier. This is the data for Anaheim and our five zip codes. We would like everyone to pay close attention to the 8.854 daily new cases which, of course, is above seven. Now compare the data in Anaheim to Orange County as a whole. And as you can see on the left, Orange County is currently at 4.6 daily new cases. So Anaheim, 8.854, Orange County, 4.6. This is why you have heard our district continue to say the data in Anaheim is much higher than Orange County as a whole. Next, let's take a look at the individual zip codes of Orange County. And you will see a story in which some of our zip codes are as high as 10.3 daily new cases. Again, very much above the seven or less daily new cases needed to fall within the red tier. So everyone, actually, based on the data in Anaheim, we fall within the first or purple tier. So our district, to determine a safe timeline to return to in-person instruction worked with our stakeholders to review this data and more and to make recommendations. Joining us now to talk about this process is Dina Mellon, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Dina, please take it away. Thank you, Dr. Downey. To begin preparing a reopening plan, it was important to make sure all stakeholders would be able to voice their opinions, provide input, and ask questions. The School Reopening Advisory Committee includes district employees, parents, 
and community members. The School Reopening Advisory Committee's goal was to determine the best options for the district to reopen and in turn make a recommendation to the school board for consideration. The committee was provided with input and feedback, resources and presentations, and possible reopening options. Since last May, the School Reopening Advisory Committee has met five different times. Additional meetings will be scheduled as needed on an ongoing basis. The committee is made up of approximately 130 members. All associations worked with the district to identify members from each school site for the committee. Likewise, all district and site parent groups are represented. Community members and district partners are also a big part of this group. Multiple opportunities to gather input and feedback from stakeholders has taken place. Surveys were sent to all district parents and all district employees. Meetings with the district LCAP, DAC, DLAC, and PTA committees, as well as meetings with the district associations, AEA, CSEA, and ASMA have also occurred. Next up is Tracy Golden, Senior Director of School Safety and Operations. Thank you, Dina. We have several safety measures in place now that will continue when students come back to school for in-person learning. Everyone at our schools over the age of two will be required to wear face coverings. Every employee and student will be given five cloth masks with the opportunity to get more as needed. Disposable masks will also be available for anyone who needs one. Our maintenance routine includes disinfecting nightly using electrostatic sprayers and frequent disinfection of high touch areas throughout the day. Hand sanitizer is available at every door throughout the school. Some situations require extra personal protective equipment that the district will provide as needed. The California Department of Public Health recommends we form cohorts when we return. A cohort is a stable group of no more than 16 people who stay together for all activities. We do this so we can minimize the number of people exposed if there is someone who tests positive for COVID-19. Once we return, there may be a need to quarantine or possibly close a school. If a person tests positive for COVID-19, anyone who came into close contact with them must quarantine for 14 days. The Orange County Healthcare Agency could decide to close a school if there are multiple positive cases in multiple classroom cohorts. If the district has 25% of its schools close in a 14-day period, the state recommends the district switch to distance learning. Every person who comes into our schools will be screened. The screening procedures include symptom questions and a temperature check for all employees, students, and visitors. Thank you, Ms. Golden. I wanna take this opportunity to give you a glimpse into what our classrooms are gonna look like when we return to in-person instruction. We understand that our students and our teachers spend most of their day in our classrooms once we're back in in-person instruction. For that reason, uh, we want to make sure that our classrooms are safe for our students and our teachers when they return. So the first thing you're going to notice in this classroom is that all non-essential furniture as well as extra desks have been removed. There are only 15 desks in the classroom and you see that every desk has what it's known as a desk guard. Every student will have their own. Every student will put their name on their desk guard and they can easily fold it at the end of the day and put it away for that next student for the following day they can use their own. And these could be put right back up again. You're also gonna see that every teacher will have their desk guard as well. And in every classroom we will have a movable instructional plexiglass shield protector that the teacher can use as she teaches and this adds an extra layer of protection between the teacher and the students. We also have hand sanitizer dispensers at every door. We have also provided plenty of hand soap and paper towels for our students to you know, wash their hands throughout the day because we know that's an important part in terms of 
you know, keeping them safe. And the other critical piece to coming back to in-person learning in terms of our classroom is the air filtration system. Our HVAC systems have been upgraded with filters to the highest rating possible. We have increased the airflow from outside as well, and we're running our units additional hours before and after the school day. But one big element that we're adding to make it even safer for everyone in our classrooms is if we're installing what is known as the Halo LED system. This is an air purifier that uses ultraviolet light in the ducking system that kills viruses, mold, odors, and any particulates, thus making the air quality that much better. The way this system works as well within the classroom, it eliminates anything that's floating or any bacteria that is on the surfaces as well. Lastly, we know the importance of disinfecting every classroom every single day. And for that purpose, we have purchased a backpack sprayer and a handheld sprayer for every one of our schools so that our custodians can disinfect each of the classrooms at the end of the workday. I wanna thank you for giving me the opportunity to give you a glimpse into what our classrooms will look like when we return to in-person instruction. Now I wanna turn it over back to Dr. Grace, our Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services for the next part of the presentation. To continue, on June 10th, the AESD Board of Education approved a reopening plan that included opening Anaheim Elementary Online Academy as well as offering in-person instruction through a blended model where students would attend school two days a week for in-person instruction and continue to learn at home through distance learning three days a week. Due to the high number of COVID-19 cases in Anaheim, a special board meeting was held on July 16, where the Board of Education voted to open the 2020-2021 school year in distance learning. Beginning in June, the district has taken action to ensure our campuses are prepared for staff and students. Stage one, our m and team went out to every single school site and arranged desks that provide six feet of social distancing for all people in the classroom, social distance markings on the floor, cleaning and sanitation, as well as upgrading the air filters on our air conditioning. On July 30th, our site administrators returned to the building and began training on screening, personal protective equipment, and social distancing. Personal protective equipment has been delivered to all schools. On August 3rd, our school offices opened for business by appointment only. All classified staff have returned and received training to support our distance learning plan, as well as safety protocols. Our campus supervisors have returned and have been assisting with the YMCA childcare, grab and go meals, and safety training. Stage three begins in late December, early January, when all AESD staff return to campuses to support in-person instruction. Stage four, Blended learning begins January 2021. Our state preschool students will return to in-person learning one day per week in person. Our SDC TK to sixth grade students will return in person five days per week. And our SDC preschool students will return in person for two days a week as well as our transitional kinder and kindergarten students, they will all return on January 11, 2021. The following week, our general education students, first grade to sixth grade, return to blended learning on Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, two days per week in person. I will now turn it back over to Dr. Downing, Superintendent of the Amazing AESD. As we prepare for our safe reopening, we are implementing the following at every school site. Plexiglass screens, as you saw earlier, for all student desks will be in place. 
we should note that your child will have their own screen and will fold it up before they leave for the day. Next, our classrooms will have the additional layer of protection to purify the air through our Remy Halo LED systems, which produce a hydrogen peroxide compound that goes into the air, attaches to any virus, and kills it while producing a self-cleaning ionizer to purify the air. We are next recruiting, training, and assigning new school safety assistant positions to support in-person instruction. They will help at selected bus stops and on buses to maintain social distancing. They will help with screening as students enter the campus and they will help wipe down high touch areas around the school throughout the school day. Our district will also move students into the new Sunkiss campus and work to provide COVID-19 testing opportunities at the key campus location. We will also be moving our staff and students back to the new Roosevelt campus. And by having our families return to the brand new Sunkist and Roosevelt campuses, we will also have transportation available for all students who formally caught buses to their campus. By having the Sunkist and Roosevelt families not have to be bused across the city, it frees up for our district 30 additional bus routes that are now available to ensure that our buses maintain the required social distancing inside. So at this time, everyone, we would like to address some of the questions that you submitted. If we do not cover your question during today's town hall, all submitted questions will have responses posted to our district website tonight. All right, here's our first question. And this question is submitted by Alejandra Garena. What is the plan for students to maintain social distance and keep their hands clean and washed throughout the day. Will you have enough staff? Alejandra, all students and staff will receive training on safety procedures, social distancing, and hand washing throughout the day. Each school will create schedules to ensure that hand washing takes place with school provided hand sanitizer and or water and soap. Staff will be assigned to ensure that these procedures take place. Thank you for your question. Question number two, submitted by Melissa. How is returning in January going to benefit our children that are already behind in learning via virtual learning? If other schools can open up with safety precautions, so can we, open up the schools. And we chose this question because Melissa, as we examine the data for Anaheim, our district, with higher data than some of our neighbors is prioritizing the safety of all and delaying in-person instruction while Anaheim's COVID-19 data begins to stabilize toward the rest of Orange County. Student tutoring has begun to assist students who may have experienced learning loss. Parents, if you would like your child to participate in tutoring, please contact your school principal. Next question, submitted by Paola Vera. The update is not very clear as it says TK through six return for five days, then TK returns for two days, and one through six return to school for two days. What is it? Also, how long will kids be at school and will they be forced to wear a mask? My kids suffer from anxiety wearing a mask all day is not ideal. So we'd like to once again review the following schedule to make sure 
this information is clear for all. So as we look at our schedule, on January 11th, our state preschool students return. State preschool students will return for one day per week in-person instruction. Our TK through sixth grade SDC students return five days per week in person, and this is as part of a mandate by the California Department of Education. Our pre-K SDC TK and kinder students return for blended learning and our blended learning schedule will consist of a student attending school either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. And your child's school in the next couple of weeks will be sending you information on whether your child will attend Monday, Wednesday or Tuesday, Thursday. On January 19th, our first through sixth grade students return for blended learning two days per week in person. And again, schools will be sending you information on whether your child will attend on Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Next, question number four, submitted by Marcella. My question is if the district could provide the schools with masks and face shields to the students for greater safety and can prevent them from touching their eyes and nose. Thank you. Yes, Marcella. Every student and staff member will receive district provided cloth face coverings and disposable face coverings will be available on campus for any stakeholder who needs one. We are also having hand sanitizing stations and resources throughout our campuses. Question number five. I'm not comfortable sending my daughter to school until this virus is clear. Can she still do the distance learning? The answer is yes. We have reopened the enrollment window for the Anaheim Elementary Online Academy. And for more information, please visit our website at www.aesd.org for more information. Next question submitted by Audra Jung. Can my child stay in distance learning in January without switching to the online academy? Will a live video option be available for students who do not come in person? For those families who want to continue with distance learning, your children must be enrolled in the Anaheim Elementary Online Academy. There will not be a live video option to continue distance learning at all of our 23 schools. Please visit our website again at www.aesd.org for more information about the Academy. Question number seven. How is this date even an option if in that time frame kids get sick the most? Is the class going to be split in half on those two days? How will that work? Well, the return dates are based on continuing guidance and review of data by our district. The January dates are intended to ensure all safety procedures outlined today are in place for every student and staff member. And as we covered earlier in tonight's town hall, we will follow guidance and limit the number of persons in a classroom at any time to no more than 16. And that includes students and staff. Next question, submitted by Lizette Jones. What are the two days the students will be attending school? Also, what are the times? Thank you. So our schools are scheduling families on either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday for in-person instruction. Your child's school will be providing your schedule in the next few weeks. And that will also include the daily schedule. Question number nine. What is being done about classrooms that don't have sinks for hand washing? Well, thank you, Patricia Angelotti. Our portable hand washing stations have been purchased for all AESD classrooms without a sink and will be in place by our January return dates. 
And question number 10, submitted by Anna. With many students not having that in-person experience that helps with cognitive development, how will our students be tested in order to conform to the guidelines of the state? Also, will students who are underperforming receive any help to catch them up at the level they are supposed to be in? Furthermore, will students be held back because they did not reach the objectives they were supposed to according to the state's guideline? So the answer to this, Anna, is where appropriate small group assessments will take place to determine where a student is when we return to in-person instruction. Tutoring is available for all students that have experienced learning loss. And during these unprecedented times, teachers and principals will be utilizing data to ensure that all students receive instruction focused on essential standards and their differentiated needs. Across the state of California, districts are not to penalize students for their participation in distance learning during these unprecedented times. So no, students will not be held back uh, as a result of participation in distance learning. We want to thank you for joining us in today's town hall. We would like to tell you that the plans that have been shared are based on the continuing stabilization of data here in Anaheim. These plans are subject to any additional guidance from Governor Newsom, the State of California, the California Department of Public Health, or our Orange County Department of Education. Safety is our number one priority, and it is our plan at this time to reopen our schools in January and provide the safest environment possible for your child to return to in-person instruction. We look forward to providing you with additional information through these virtual town halls. Your principals will continue to have virtual principal chats. We will continue to update our website and we will also provide our district-wide family letters to keep you informed about Anaheim Elementary School District and our plans to reopen. Thank you all for joining us this evening and we look forward to seeing you soon. Stay safe and healthy.